the test is underway here. Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. I'm out here with the Phoenix TK-35R. And tonight's exercise, if everything goes well, is going to be an extended turbo burndown test. Now I have to uh, pause here for a second and apologize for the background noise. There are multiple birthday parties going on right now. All I can do is talk over it, hope ca I can take care of the rest in post. So what I wanna do, and I alluded to this at the uh, end of the first review, is we got an idea of what the turbo burndown looks like over a two to three minute time frame. So we kind of saw that initial step down. But then the question is, okay, is that level really useful? If so, for what distances, what type of uh, hiking and exploration tasks is that being useful? And what does it look like, not just a, a few minutes, but maybe an hour or two later? I'm hoping to get a couple hours in tonight. We'll just have to see. So my plan is to post up somewhere. Hopefully the party will break up in time for me to get this all set up the way I want. I'm going to spend that first few minutes showing you what turbo looks like in thermal imaging since we've already seen the turbo beam shot. Let that burn down for a bit. We'll see how the heat builds up across the body. I'm going to keep a timer going and then I'll finish that segment and take the uh, light immediately out to the preserve, go out and do some hiking and exploration. All right, the test is underway here. Yeah, that's really heating up. I'm very interested to seeing how much heat makes it down here into the grip area. Past a minute now. Well, I may be speaking prematurely, but it seems like it's kind of maxed out, possibly beginning the turn here.
All right, in the ballpark of three minutes, I may let it go to four. I really want to get out and get started with the remainder of the test. This is looking like, in temperature, a bit of a steady state. All right, well, let's uh, go ahead and wrap this first segment up and then uh, get out in the field, see what it looks like. All right, there's a quick time update. I get my headlamp off. And I'm a good 100, 110 yards from the bridge where I normally do output level testing. Uh, very strong and usable beam right now. Certainly nowhere near its original turbo output. The grip area, when I first picked it up, was warm, not uncomfortable. It's gotten just a little bit better as the exercise progresses. Time update. So I thought I'd come down to this uh, creek area and explore a bit. The head area of the light is still very warm, certainly not uncomfortable. You could grab it and hold on to it, no big deal. The uh, warmth in the grip area is pretty much gone. I would say it's uh, more than comfortable enough. Looks like we've gone down to what I'm going to say is probably more like a medium output level. We're very close to there. Now that's just a guess based on what I remember from the uh, first review, but this looks like an output level that will probably be maintained for a significant time. I think I'm gonna give this at least an hour to an hour and a half tonight to confirm that suspicion. Still very usable, though, for just general path-following and exploration. And here we are a couple of minutes later. I need to step this off again. I think I'll do that when it gets a little bit cooler. The far tree line there is, I think, a good 140 yards. I can just barely light that up. I cannot get any significant detail whatsoever. I could, of course, get eye shine out there, so that's a practical range for very basic detection, but that, that's about it. Time update at the top of the observation tower. And there you have it. And there is the current mission time. Yes, you've probably seen this area before. Still very hard to get way back there, 55 to 60 yards line of sight. We move around here, look up into the trees. We'll go over to this side. And if I get right over in the corner, we can move the distance up. All right, there we go. I mean, this is really, really looking like a steady state that's going to be maintained for a long period of time, especially if it really is 
at or near that medium output level. What I think I'm gonna do is go between an hour, an hour and a half, probably come back to this spot. What I'll do is I'll cycle the light back around to its medium output so we can do a quick comparison and then uh, shut it down for the night. All right, I'm back and there is the current time. And it looks pretty much the same, right? Let's go back over here. Yeah, same old, same old. It's going to hold this output for a pretty considerable amount of time with this much uh, battery. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, there's medium. Um, that looks awfully close. I guess this brings up uh, an interesting point. This is a very useful level of illumination. I mean, for any exploration I would do here at the preserve, maybe out at Oak Point, even many areas out at the LBJ grasslands, this would be more than suitable illumination. And I like to do these tests um, for a couple reasons. One, first and foremost, for my own purposes, I really don't want to take any piece of kit out and use it in search and rescue or what I would call uh, more adventurous uh, explorations until I very carefully determine what the performance envelope is. And I don't rely on lab measurements. I, I want to do my own field measurements. The second is I think these things are useful for people who are new to the flashlight business. And we've all been new at, at one point. And it's really bad with marketing uh, in, in this day and age. There are just lights everywhere and they all have big numbers on the box. And it's real easy to get excited about buying something and oh boy, I've got that big number. And what's even worse is uh, someone flips the box over and they see a run time at the turbo output. Maybe it's three and a half hours just for sake of argument. So the thought is, oh wow, I can take that light out and turn it on and get that turbo output for three and a half hours straight. Well, no, you can't. You get the turbo output for an extremely limited amount of time and then deal with regulated output for the rest of that time. So uh, take some time, read up on the ANSI FL1 specs peak output and particularly the runtime spec which is unfortunately abused quite a bit in the industry. The other piece of advice I try to give to people who are new is that if you're evaluating a light that has you know the usual low medium high turbo maybe there's an ultra low or eco thrown in there uh, spend a lot of time getting as much information as you can about the medium and high output levels. Those are likely to be the outputs that will give you the best balance between an output level and sustained performance at that output level. All right, well, enough of me babbling on. I think we know what the, uh, the extended turbo output for this product looks like it's basically if you're going to be running for a long period of time don't even bother with turbo just put it in medium occasional uh, flashes too high let's look at one more thing real quick since we've been running for nearly an hour and a half here in medium so let's go high and yes we can get back up to turbo have more than enough battery uh, let's see how quick this rundown this uh, burn down is yeah, I've got uh, my hand pretty close to the head area of the light. That heat's really building up. My guess is if you go back and compare this to the uh, burn down test in the first video, the step down will probably happen a bit quicker. But we'll see, that's why I like to run the tests. And of course, on the subject of test, 
if there's additional testing that you would like to see, additional information that you would like to get. Yes, yeah, see how it's really burning down there and we're back to kind of that uh, roughly medium output level. But uh, yeah, that, that's why for me, turbo is something I use for very short intervals, maybe 30 seconds max. And even then, only for making downrange identification. If I can't make a downrange identification in 30 seconds, I need a more powerful light, a magnified optic, or I just need to change my position. And on that happy note, I'm going to shut it down for tonight. And as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.